Okay, look, I'm a YouTuber. It's what I do for a living. And so any video you see on my channel is very, very processed, very edited, very specifically made to be a high quality video. This one is not gonna be like that. And that's because I'm working on my truck here. It's a 1995 GMC Suburban. So let me show you what I got going on. Taking a peek inside the cab here, you can see I have all kinds of stuff ripped apart, wires everywhere. This is basically the bulkhead that passes through the firewall. You can see that hole in the firewall there. And this is the front of it that basically attaches to, it attaches to this half here. The reason why I'm making this video and why I'm showing you that is because I've been dealing with an issue with this truck ever since I, basically ever since I bought it. Now the issue is the truck will randomly, and I'm talking complete random, I'm talking years in between when this happens, but it's the exact same issue. The truck will just die. I'm driving along, you know, actually multiple times it's happened at a stoplight. I'm sitting there at a red light, the light turns green, I go to press the gas, the, the truck stumbles for a second and just dies, completely dead. I put it in park, try to turn the key, no click, nothing. So the first time it ever happened, I had my father-in-law tow me back home. I was very close to home, thankfully. But this last time, which was just a few days ago, I'm driving, I'm pretty far from home. I'm like 15 miles from home. Same thing, I'm at a stoplight and the light turns green. I hit the gas and it dies right in the middle of the intersection. But I knew from prior experiences, somehow I was able to figure out that that wiring down there and that driver's side wheel well pass-through was the culprit. Well, it was kind of my thought that it was the culprit. I had no idea what exactly it was. You see, back when it first happened, and I've made videos about this way back when my channel was brand new, I thought it was the negative battery cable or the positive battery cable. I had a lot of those things replaced. I did the big three upgrade, the big four, and all that stuff. And all that stuff needed to be dealt with at the time. I actually found problems that I thought were this issue that weren't this issue that were problems in themselves that have been fixed. So I'm really happy to say I finally figured this out. So if you have a, you know, I don't even know if it goes to the earlier years. I'm assuming it's 95 on up, these GMT 400 vehicles. If you drive one of these and you have an issue where your vehicle will randomly and completely randomly just shut down, just turn off, whether you're on the freeway, happened to me on the freeway, driving along 70 miles an hour, truck shuts off. Scary. It definitely is very scary. So if you have one of these vehicles, this may be your issue. You do still need to check your battery cables because when I was searching for this issue, I ended up finding the factory battery cables, you know, that are covered in that thick rubber material. Inside of that, the ring ends were actually broken and cracked. So they were having a very tough time making connection there and all that stuff has been fixed. I thought that was the problem. And like I said, it's been years since I had this issue again. So, just the other day, it popped up and I knew, hey, I, I guess I hadn't fixed it. And it was always in the back of my mind and I'm finally tearing into this thing and I have found it. So back in the cab here, what I did was I took this front piece off and you do that by removing a couple of screws. There's one screw here and there's one screw up there, but you gotta remove them from inside the engine bay. There's just two small screws, kind of hard to get to, but you can, you can get them out. Once you do that, this gray piece pops off, which will then reveal this white piece directly behind it. Now, this is still kind of loosely sitting there in that hole there in the firewall. And like I said, from prior experiences, somehow, some way, I was able to figure out that it had something to do with these wires here because I think I randomly hit this or moved something and then the vehicle was able to start again. So I knew, oh my gosh, something, it must be something here. But not being able to replicate that, I ended up replacing my main charge wire that comes to this fuse block from the battery, thinking that maybe that whole system and touching those wires somehow affected this. And so I thought that's what that was. And I had that fixed and I thought 
I was good. So you can obviously see there's a red wire dangling here. And, and what I was telling you earlier is I would come down here and start jiggling wires. And with my key on in the run position and the little orange shifter light that turns on, you know, under the park, the P there, when I would jiggle the wires, I could see that light turning on and off, flickering. So with that method, I was able to narrow it down to this red wire. I'm gonna flip this thing over and show you exactly where that red wire went. Okay, I'm sure in that far upper right corner there, you can see that that terminal that is a little brown. It's a little burnt. So if you take a look at that terminal and how the plastic is burnt, that means we had a loose connection there and that was causing the connection to heat up and cook that plastic. So thankfully I've been able to narrow it down and finally, after all these years, figure out this thing that's always been in the back of my mind, if it was gonna happen again, and lo and behold it did, and I was finally able to figure out which exact wire was the culprit. Now you can see, I took a bunch of plugs apart. These all go inside the engine compartment through that firewall up there, but I had to do it so that I could get better access to the back of this and be able to rip this wire out. Now, another thing to note, how exactly do you get these bigger wires out? Well, you can see that little clip there, right there on the bottom, or the top, once it's installed, that is what you're gonna have to slide something very thin and flat and push that clip down so you could pull the wire out. I couldn't figure it out, so I had to just yank that thing out of there, but lesson learned, and hopefully this will help somebody out there to know how to remove these wires from this bulkhead harness. So inspecting the actual wire and this terminal end link, everything looks good. Nothing looks like it can't be reused, so what I'm gonna do is re-bend all these pieces back to where they should have been. I'm gonna go ahead and make the tolerances really, really tight so that this connection is a nice, tight connection. So back in the engine compartment, you can see this plug is what plugs into that bulkhead harness. And this top cornermost pin is the one that had the loose connection. Looking closely at the metal of that pin, you can see it does look a little different from the other two. And that's because of the loose connection causing heat. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean that up a little bit before I put this back together. Okay, here's where I'm at. I took this terminal here and just pinched it all back together. I made this little piece here a lot more prominent. So when the pin goes through here, it's gonna make a really good contact and it won't be loose. Hopefully so completely solving the problem that I was having. It's now time to slide this wire back into its space here. And before I did that, you can see that little tab that's sticking up on the top there. I had to re-bend that up because when I yanked this wire out of here, I bent it down. So I'm hoping that by bending it up quite a lot, that it's got some meat left in that plastic to grab onto. So here goes nothing. I'm assuming I'll hear a click or something. So let's try this. Oh, that didn't grab onto anything. Okay, I'm gonna have to bend it up more. All right, how's that? I just bent that up quite a bit, so let's see what that does. Hopefully that'll do me what I need to be done here. All right, that is nice and tight not coming out. So I think we're good on the reinstall of the wire. And looking back at it from this side, everything looks really good. Well, this is a moment of truth moment. Uh, I just put everything back together, tightened down every screw, every bolt, everything is back together. Hopefully this thing is gonna start first of all. So let's give it a turn over into the run position. All right, well, that's a good sign. I can hear things happening. Let's go ahead and give it a start. Okay, well the truck is running. It did start kind of rough. I'm not sure if that's just because it's been sitting for a few days or what have you, but it usually doesn't do that. She's a running, that's for sure. Running really, really good. Been driving it all around and uh, really, really it's 
just like before. Runs really smooth, really good, and now it hasn't died. I have wiggled some of the wires around down there, and I've not been able to repeat the issue. So, I'm thinking that we're fixed. At least I know exactly where the issue lies. If I were to ever come across this problem again, I can then further figure out what needs to be done. But for now, I think we're good. Here we go. Well, there you go. I started the video out letting you know that this wasn't a typical video for the channel. This was a somewhat of a PSA for those of you who own the GMT 400 platform vehicles. So yeah, if you have an issue like mine where your vehicle just randomly shuts off, you're driving along and the vehicle just dies. Whether you're stopped and getting ready to go or on the freeway, it's happened to me in all different occasions. And I thought, you know, hey, maybe I fixed it, but it was always in the back of my mind. And it just happened the other day again. And it, I'm, I'm just like, you know what? I'm tearing into this thing. I'm gonna wiggle every single wire down there till I figure it out. And it took me about a day and a half to do that. I had, to, I had multiple sessions of getting under there and messing with the wires, trying to figure it out. I had my wife watching the little light on there. And the other thing that would happen was the speedometer would kind of bounce when that light and everything would be shutting off and on. So. That's probably not good for the truck. It's probably not good for the computer doing that, but that was the only way I could diagnose which wire it was. That's the first time I've been into that firewall kind of bulkhead right there where all the wires come together. So that was a learning experience for me. And also trying to pull out that one wire after I found out which one, that was also, although now I know that it's very simple, that was difficult. And so I eventually just ripped it out, which is, definitely a no-no. You can break stuff like that. So don't do what I did. Hopefully this helps in some way, somebody out there. And uh, if you did get something from it, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up. It really helps this whole channel and the video. And also if you've watched this far and you're not a subscriber to One Road, consider subscribing. I'm Jimmy. That's my 95 GMC Suburban that is featured on this channel so much. We have a lot more coming up for it, including very, very soon, a tune-up that I'm gonna be doing. Cap and rotor, plug wires, and what's weird is I've already installed the plugs, but that's in another video, which you'll have to go back and watch. Anyways, I will see you in the next one.